good. It sounds good. What is it? <laughs> is my mic fucked? Your mic's fine. <laughs> Your hat's cool. Yeah, it says carcass. Carcass. They're a grindcore turned death metal. Of course band. they are. We're fucking carcass. <laughs> uh, so, so, so. What's what kind of band is uh, Waste Management? They're a hardcore punk band. Hardcore punk. Hardcore punk. They're they're a, a Boston style eighties hardcore punk band. Though they also pay tribute to the Burning Spirits Japanese style, particularly the work of Warhead, one of my favorite Japanese bands. Hi, this is When Will It End? I'm Josh. I'm Charles. And oh boy, uh, here we are. Mm-hmm. We, you're probably looking at that episode and heading and saying, "Wait a minute, the boys aren't in space." What? They're, they're, they're not up there in the stars. Why were they? What? They're probably wondering why are they down there in the sewers, in the gutters. Wait, why would they think we're in the stars? In dirty old New York City. Oops, I just hit the mic. You hit the mic. Oh I no, punched Charles. it like a ninja. You did a ninja punch. And hey, before we go any farther, look at look at the readout and I tell can't. me. There's okay, paper that's fine. Yeah. Right. Um, Was that we, too loud? It was loud. Yes, we're doing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> These are good noises. Pow. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Heroes in a Half Shell Turtle Power They are the world's most fearsome Shut the fuck up! Shut up! They're the world's most fearsome fighting teens And they're heroes in a half shell And they're green When the evil Shredder attacks Something, something. Hey, Teenage Mutant Ninja, Ninja Turtles, Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Cowabunga! Yeah. Heroes in a Half Wait, Shell Wait, was that a Turtle Terminator? Power. Reference. I love being a turtle, dude. Just fuck this. This Terminator's Calbunga. Want to go ride around? What P- we, pizza. Okay, so you're totally him. Leonardo. You're Leonardo. I thought it was Donatello. Oh no, you yeah, you picked Donatello. I'm so sorry. I misturtled you. That's all right. That's all right. You okay? Yeah. You want to walk it off? No. Are you sad I about like it? This chair. It's a good chair. It's yeah. very low. Your little tuckus is got low. Little, it's got a little beer holder, too. It's got a little beer holder. Oh, my God. Okay, so it's When Will It End. It's a very good podcast hosted by two very good people. It's great. I'm white. He's white. Man. He has glasses. I don't. Yeah. I'm wearing a hat. He's not. We both got sort of beards. We both went to the same elite private sco- college. It's college. It's, it's, we went to college where we learned to pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Pick Never it. meant to talk on wood, walk on, to, to knock on wood. So we watch movies. Uh, we don't just watch random movies. We watch whole franchises we from start, start the first one, to finish. Watch all of them. It's a movie podcast. It's for movie fans. You like movies? You like us? <laughs> Listen and, to this. And we're starting a new movie series this yeah. time. And what do you uh, think about that? I always think that's fun. Cowabunga! Starting a new one? Yeah. Well, okay, we're starting this on a big old day, because baby, let's fucking go Mets. Pete Alonso just broke the MLB rookie home run record. He's a golden god, polar bear forever, suck you, fuck you, pet Mets rule. I'm in a good mood about this. Wow, well, we're dating the episode. I'm a little bummed about that. You know what? I'm not. This is a day that will live on forever. Okay, that's true. Forever. We can, we'll be celebrating this in Baseball. two months. Baseball. The crack of the bat. The, <laughs> said, no the crack shit. of the jack. The crack of the bat and the crack of the jack. What's the crack of the jack? Cracker, Cracker jack? Yeah, you fucking idiot. The the candy. And it's not really, well, it's basically a candy. Yeah. It's really that, that parents are very liberal about Cracker Jacks, which is- And a cereal. Caramel-coated- thing it's it's barely anything when we were kids my parents somehow let us we convinced them to let let us eat peanut butter uh reese's peanut butter yeah cereal it's like just sugar my mom was dead set against anything unhealthy growing up she was dead set against any anything anything unhealthy oh unhealthy so as a result i gorged on on unhealthy shit whenever i had the opportunity to which is very unhealthy Mm -hmm. i have a bad i have a a bad relationship with food i think i reward myself with food Uh. you you, you just looked at my gut I you just looked at my fucking gut. I did not. You, you fucking did. Wow. What do you think, huh? It's really nice. Thank you. I love it. I like it too. But I remember we went to visit my cousins in LA and they were like, uh, what do you want for breakfast? We have, I don't know, Reese's uh, Pieces Puffs or whatever the fuck that shit was called. Can you stop saying Reese's Pieces? Reese's Pieces. Thank you. Just fucking something to go Mets. Let's go fucking Mets. Yes. And, they're, and they gave me a bowl of Reese's puffs yeah in whole milk the spheres this yes the yes uh yes the globular uh yes the re really chocolate peanut buttery treat in a in a in a 3d circle i just wanted to make sure you weren't just eating reese's pieces out of a bowl with milk in it 
Uh, God, I wish. Yeah, dude. I now know what I'm doing. After. Honestly, we the should look at the, this wraps. <laughs> we'll get you fucking almond milk. Well, we should just we'll... look at nutrition facts for Reese's Pieces versus. Do you think they're the... good? Do you think they're good for you? Yeah. No, I'm saying I bet it's the same. Probably, as the it, cereal. Honestly, yeah, it's about the same. Less corn in the yeah. uh, right. Uh, so they again after like growing up in a house where I was eating like a Dannon yogurt or whatever or like granola, I had fucking Reese's puffs in whole milk, and of course, yeah. you know, '90s kids will fucking remember but that the milk for that shit just turns into this like rich soup of just like mm. chocolate peanut butter it's insanely fucking wait good. you don't think do they not make it anymore or did they surely make it but like, kids I that think, are younger don't i think remember that kind cereal? of cereal like was just so big i mean yeah. my the if you remember the advertisements on like on nickelodeon or whatever for me cereal the most thrilling fucking do you thing. watch nickelodeon constantly oh you, you still do the channel I I saying, watch. Watch. they probably still advertise for sugary cereal on nickelodeon are you saying every generation probably had broadly a similar experience in the capitalist miracle nation of America? That is exactly what I was saying. For beautiful, for spacious. Mm-hmm. What the fuck? No. For, for I'm doing the harmony. Two, three. For beautiful. Mm-hmm. It's confusing. I don't know what you're I'm doing. Sorry. Well, you got the cans good. on. I got the cans on. You probably on. can hear me more than you can hear yourself. Wow. Do you think that maybe when we share our lives with each other, like on a podcast, we end up hearing more of each other's than ourselves? I would hope so. Mm, yes. Why don't uh, so I get cans? Today oh, you're, in the the, show, you're the producer. Yeah, I'm the fucking producer. You're the, we're both EPs. Co-EPs. Co-EPs. You're the editor. Editor. I do I'm, great I'm the engineer. Job. I'm the engineer. I got the cans. Yeah. When I was making those punching noises earlier, you think they're too loud? They're not going to be too loud. Yeah. They're, they're, you I take the care of thing. it. I take care of it in post. You don't know shit. You know what I fucking tell Jesus you? Jesus Christ. Fuck you. Oh my God. Shut up. Oh my God. So, so we're starting a new series, of course, Teenage Mutant Ninja <gasps> so Turtles. Exciting. They're Heroes in the Half Shell, Turtle Power, um, Gritty Yucky New York. But before we get into that, we have a special got, feature on the show. Yeah, we got some we got some business We're doing to take a little bit of, of a business thing to take care of. And yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. before we go any farther, it's time for some taste testing of beers. <laughs> and Charles. Not sure why, but and Charles, I'm excited. I yeah. got a special beers. Here is your. What is this? Here is the receipt, receipt stuck on it. to it. It is the limited edition. Oh shit! The limited edition Dogfish Head and the Grateful Dead present American Beauty. It is a uh, Grateful Dead inspired. It's a long, strange trip of the Grateful Dead inspired. Uh, so sorry, I read that wrong. Excuse me. <clears throat> Take two, a long, strange trip with the Grateful Dead inspired this pale ale brewed with granola, honey, and all American hops. Wow. Here we go. Let's get all American. We, we got to get one of these. Hold ready? on. Ready? Yeah, ready? Yeah. Ready? Wait. Let's do it on okay. one, Are two. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Go. Oh, daddy like can i see uh, that yeah, yeah. It's, it's a real pop exact there. same yeah. time clink clink to your health and, and, and you are of course a beer professional i expect nothing less than a full right. beer review well here. i mean you're not supposed to drink it out of the can to get those and oh, for and shit. fuck's sake dude i'm not i'm just saying let's smell it, it smells honey <laughs> yeah we, we got it fuck yeah it I, smells sweet mm, but a little bit of pale <laughs> yeah get some caramel oh sorry get, get some, some get some caramel okay, let's just drink the fucking thing Oh, I like that. Mm. That's mm. Some, that's a smooth beer. It's a smooth beer. It's sweet and smooth and a little strange and long. That's so nice. Yeah. Well, thank you. I remember when I was a kid, uh, I didn't know what the Grateful Dead was, but my friend had a bumper sticker that said, I support the right to arm bears. And I thought it was really funny and cute. And I said, oh, can I have one? He said, no. A bumper sticker? Yeah. He just had them? Yeah, he had a couple. Okay. And they were Grateful Dead bumper stickers. So they right. had little bears at the bottom. They had guns. And it said support the right. Rather than to bear arms, it said to arm bears. Okay. I'm not sure if that was official dead paraphernalia. Well, the thing about the dead is there's a whole lot of bootleg paraphernalia out there. And gosh dang, if I don't That's own nice. a fuck ton of it. Well, this is nice. It's a really smooth. Like, mouth feels big. Yeah. Mouth also, feels uh, it's like really smooth, pillowy, silky almost. I'm loving this. You're a beer professional. I'm just some fucking moron who loves chugging a brewsker. Yeah, I mean, but that's all a beer professional is, is someone who's in the industry and loves chugging brewskers. So we're, these are big old tall boys. The, I love the can They're design. big old. We got our marching bears sipping on a frosty mug. 6.5 alcohol by volume. We got a nice cold pint in front of us. So here's the here's the thing. Okay. Uh, I, I know the listener, all, every listener knows this about me, but I'm vegan. And some of you... Hold out on a second. I'm just going to let everyone finish applauding okay. before you continue. Thank you. But no, I mean, I'm, yeah. most of them are probably like, what the fuck? Because one of the words that you read out loud was honey. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. But... Yes. Bit of a hypocrite, huh? I personally don't give a shit. But bees. 
Well, no, I give a shit about bees, but I don't the give bees a bees sh- are dying. You don't fucking care. I don't give a shit about honey. Okay. Because all of our practices. Is it bee cum or bee like like they, they rub the, the pollen and it make it. It's it makes, vom. It's vomit. It's puke. So like puking it out. Huh? Yeah. I was talking to my uh, roommate, housemate, friend the other day. Anything else that covers the. No, I was thinking about the, Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, and he was like, it's weird that honey's weird because most. Because we were talking about eating stuff and like how we basically just eat a bunch of sex stuff all the time. Because like all fruits, sex stuff. Like we eat a lot of sex stuff. Milk, well, I mean, like it's sex the related. reproductive organ of right. plants is to make the seeds all sexy. Right. And then it was like, yeah, it makes sense because that's going to be where all the stuff is. It's That's like got all the stuff in it. And he's like, bees, honey's weird that we're eating that because it's just vomit. And we yeah. don't eat anyone else's vomit. But I was like, hold on. Hold yeah. on. If you puked right now You'd go and it was a thick, sweet, delicious nectar, mm. I'd slurp that shit up faster than a plate of linguine. Eat, I mean, I'd be in there too. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, you'd, you'd be, be slurping your own vomit. Oh my up. god! Yeah, yeah. yeah sure, you'd, sure, have to, sure. you'd have to be fast. We were talking earlier with my my girlfriend about uh, eating our own cum. Mm-hmm. I have not. I have. Okay. Many yeah. times. I'm, well, I'm happy for you. Well, I did it. Uh, I did it once because maybe I, I told the story on the podcast. Would before. you say a little goes a long way? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, there was this outdoor thing in Davis Square, and uh, Honest Tea had this board where if you like put up. You could take a piece of paper and fill it out with a truth because they're called honest tea. And then when you put it up on the big board, you got a free honest tea. Okay. And I feel like they really opened themselves up here. Yeah. And I wrote down, never had my own cum. And then I was like, why? I make it all the fucking time. Hold on. Just be, just to, to back up for a minute. Yeah. In writing down a, a truth for a iced tea promotional event in public. Yeah. That you'd never eaten your own semen. Yeah. You realize that this is actually a well, roadblock in your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really interesting. Like, I did it as a joke, and I was like, wow, I've never actually done that. And here's the thing about jokes, if you'll permit me. I will. Thank you. The thing about humor mm-hmm. is that the, the best jokes yeah. are based in truth. That's so true. And is, is think, that a joke? Because that's all true. I think comedians, yeah. hear me out, are the last truth tellers left. Oh my, The only, yeah. There are the heroes out there. I mean, what are we, are we looking at? The White House? <laughs> uh, we got we've got a Joker, and, and I, I don't mean Joaquin Phoenixes. Okay, I'm talking no, I mean, about should... uh, the 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 fucking orange man. He's a treat Cheeto guy. <laughs> Wait, what'd you call him? Uh, the orange That's man. Okay. <laughs> he's yeah, he's guy. not a truth. He's a, he's the opposite of he's truth. A freaking, yeah. Uh, what we got? Pharmaceutical companies. Not a single truth teller. Nope. Either. Nope. Uh, school teachers. They they ban our medicine. They, Police officers and force us to take their poison. Right. Oxycontin. Yep. Yeah. Um. I can't even think of anyone else in this country except for comedians, and they're our last truth tellers. They're the last truth tellers, and I think that <laughs> they make me laugh. <laughs> they're so funny. It's they're, so good. It's so good. And uh, it's really funny. they're I right just, that these triggered, uh, these triggered SJW cucks are killing stand up. You can't joke about the good stuff anymore. All right, <laughs> come on. You can't tell it how it is. Well, that's true. You can't that's tell true. it like it is. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I decided to eat my own cum because. I mean, it's, I do it, I make, I don't make other people Hold do on. it, wh- but I put wh- other people in a position where they can. Why do we hike Everest? Why do we <laughs> ford rivers? Why do we build cathedrals and yeah. wander through valleys? Because they're there. Yeah. Because they're there, my friend. Why do we eat our own cum simply for <laughs> it emits I mean, from it, our it's penises? There. <laughs> after stimulation of our glands. Yeah. It emerges. Blech. Spurts, some would say. Yeah, uh, Richard. But yes, you were Howell? saying uh, Richard Hell. He would say that. Oh yeah, love comes in spurts. Oh no, yeah. it hurts. Oh no. It How about those voidoids though? Huh? Oh my god, I'm started. scared of voidoids. I feel like uh, the voidoids could be in one of the TMNT sequels. Well, I mean, I will say the Foot Clan hangout is like the coolest hangout oh ever. We were, we were so jealous. We all smoke cigs and play poker with like 15 year olds and skateboard. <laughs> That's a terrible uh, fake cigarette smoke. But yes, but anyway, you were saying uh, you, you don't force people to eat your cum, which is no. nice. It's refreshing to hear that. But I do put people in a situation where they have that as an option. Mm. And I wanted to make sure I should, if I'm going to put that on the table. Mm. <laughs> I think it was like a... Well, I was the whole dick. The dick's on the table. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Uh, I should at least be test, like at least every once in a while, be testing the product, as they say. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, Pretty good product. Here's the thing. And I'm really happy we're getting into semen at the start of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles episode. Um, I have heard from some people, and I think this might be vegan propaganda. Some vegans have told me 
vegan semen taste better than meat eater semen? I personally have no, I, I do not know. I cannot speak from ignorance. Yeah. I mean, I've only tested my own. But you've been both vegan and non-vegan. Yeah. Have you tested the batch recently since your vegan conversion? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did, did you notice any demarkable? Yeah, it's actually, uh, it was better. I, I'm not lying. It's, it was better. Describe to me what what are the fa the factors here. I mean, I'm sure there are other things involved, but diet's probably big, mm. and this was a little bit whiter. Okay, uh, maybe more pearly and opalescent. Yeah, a little clearer. Wow, and less intense. I think it's just a calmer experience overall. Okay. Any like uh, how about like uh, is is the bouquet different or does that hold uh -huh. true? Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's sort of like. It's a little bit stale, I think, when I was eating meat and dairy. Sure, smelling yeah. and tasting. Um, but I only t I've only tested it a few times. I mean, more recently now, but it's all been vegan, and it's all been pretty good. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's hey, two reviews today. We reviewed the Talk Fish Head Limited Edition American Dead American Be Grateful Dead. Excuse me, American Beauty Ale. Yeah. We also reviewed Charles has come. Yeah. This has been a big episode. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we can safely say this has been an intro for the books. Which books? Uh, the band, the, the books. Uh, oh, Nick Zemo oh, yeah. and Paul Dijon. Love yeah, that big fans of the They're show. Great. Hello, Nick and Paul. You guys are not a band anymore. Hmm. It's over. I saw them at the MFA many years ago. It was really I, fun. I've seen them a few. They used to call North Adams like their home base. I've seen them at cool. uh, Mass Mocha. Yeah. Go four one three Berkshire. I've seen them at uh, the a little club called Pearl Street Northampton. A Ugh, real piece of shit. What a terrible venue. Fuck that guy. Fuck that place. That's cool. That we're talking about Northampton. Someone smoked weed during the books show, which is a very quiet set. Yeah. And I was amazed at how politely pre legalization. I was amazed at how politely the staff handled it. Yeah. But it was. I was. I admired the person. I was like, I'm fucking ripping bowl. In Boston, they would have been punched. Sure. I, they would, get the fuck out of it. Boston's a nightmare. Yeah. Place. Someone got. Someone was vaping. And they got kicked, almost got kicked out. Really? Almost, yeah. Vaping's fine. Yeah. Um, but tell Charlie Baker that. What I was going to say is it's appropriate that we're talking about Pearl Street, Northampton, Massachusetts. Because... Uh, oh, hold on. Save that connection. Okay. We have, we have one more thing to get to. Star Wars? Star Wars. We yeah. were going to do Star Wars. We were. We were. We had just uh, wrapped recording on much of the Terminator series. Uh, again, not to date this, but we were we got a lot done with the Terminator series. And we're moving to you know the, the next uh, recordable segment we can work on, which is this new series. And we popped in the theatrical version DVD. Yeah, DVD. From this box set that we had. It's insane. One, uh, the, the sheer stunningly brutal quality was like, <laughs> actually upsetting to, to realize as an adult we talked about this in the et episode in our former podcast the real deal with josh and charles uh, still online somewhere um same website to watch et on in, in hd quality after seeing it eleven thousand times on vhs as a kid was actually very intense like to see it as it was like meant to be seen and not like yeah. on a, at a tape that i'd bludgeoned to death as a child and this was like the opposite where it's like you realize how far technology has come where you just were like forcing yourself to watch it in this like truly miserable. Do you mind if I paint a little picture? Please. Uh, well, first of all, we were watching it on DVD because that's the only way you can watch the original theatrical version. And it's not streaming. Uh, hashtag Han Shot First. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, I honestly, that's the thing. Who is gives like, a shit? Who gives a shit? Because we were also, so we were watching it on DVD. We were watching it. We couldn't quite figure out your TV setting. So when I were watching it, I think squished. So it was like it was ultra letterbox. And the like, motion smoothing was still on. So yeah. it, just, it looked like crazy yeah. long shit. <laughs> it was like um, a bad show on the, not sci-fi, S-Y-F-Y, -Y, like the sci-fi network from the 90s. It looked really, it looked like Star Trek bullshit. It was really bad. It looked awful. And, and like, we realized within maybe two minutes that like, this that world that ip that series has actually been ruined like as a society we have squatted and taken a fat shit all over Star i predicted Wars. this you did it's, i did well I, I think we've often professed a reticence to talk about the, sh the movies on you the know. podcast for good reason yeah it's like actually so colonized and rehashed and recycled and regurgitated that it, it's just it's it's hard to watch with fresh eyes yeah, it's really hard to come to it within the enthusiasm of a younger person because it actually has been beaten to fucking death. Yeah. I'm not blaming. I don't. I think A New Hope is a great movie with a lot of fun stuff in it. But like, mm -hmm. as a sad product of our you know despondent, dying culture, our failing culture, our sad, very bad culture, um, 
it's no longer fun to watch. And the idea of talking about nine of those movies was actually soul crushing. Yeah, we looked at each other and were just like, we're, we, we we couldn't get through the first two minutes. There's no way we're fucking watching nine movies. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're, well, yeah, like I'll, I'll never watch the prequels again. There's like, we watched them once. We watched the first one once because we were, we were as a joke. We're like, we should watch them all again. Well, what happened was me and my friend Eric had just seen Lana Del Rey at TD Garden in Boston. We were like yeah. fucking thrilled with life. We'd gotten <laughs> mysteriously upgraded to nicer seats due to a Ticketmaster error. Everything had oh gone our way God. that night. And we we come back to Charles's house. You got being both like, shirts. We got a, a real shirt and a bootleg shirt. Official. It was great. Yeah. And we get back to Charles and we're like, the world's our fucking oyster. We can do anything. Oh, I know. Let's watch Phantom Menace. <laughs> Weird. And uh, Jar Jar shows up eight minutes in and then that's kind of the movie. That's that's pretty much it. Um, anyway, so they, they did, we couldn't even handle the, the intro to A New Hope. Yeah. And I was like, well, nine of these fucking things? Nine. Well, I mean, we could do the ninth one as like a little bonus. I guess we could. But probably not. I don't want to. We, right. we have so many things that we've actually set our sight on covering as they come out. That's true. There's some good stuff coming Listeners out. Listeners will have just heard our Terminator 6 episode. Yeah. So, you know, you, you know how fucking great that probably was because we loved 5. <laughs> um, we'll be we'll be hearing about the new Bad Boys. We'll be hearing about the new Saw. We have a lot of amazing things coming out. Yeah. So get excited. Get excited. 2020 is going to be amazing. Right. But, you know, honestly, we've been talking this all year. I am not that excited for Dawn of the Skywalkers or whatever it's called. I'm fine. I don't really, it's just like, JJ's going to do, a, I'm sure, the same lackluster hatchet job he did in The Force Awakens. They kicked out anybody interesting. I just have, there's no suspense left. I think we got the peak of the entire series with... Uh, Rogue One. Well, Rogue One, and then secondarily, I think, Adam Driver in The Last Jedi. Yeah. I think it's fucking amazing. I'm still excited for that relationship. I guess. I, I will, just like, I watch I the trailer go. and I'm like, oh, fuck. Yeah. These fucking guys. Yeah. Fuck but, them. uh... So it, it, what turned out to be a joke, which then turned out to be real life, became so unbearable that it's... I don't think it's either. I don't think we have to mention Star Wars ever again. Wow, we're closing the book. Closing the book. Boom. Oh, we have a book here. Hold on. Wait, hold on. Ready? Okay. Wait, are you going to close it? Or? No, you open it and close it. I'll get, I'll get on the mic. Ready? Okay. Ready? You just put your mic on, right? Just get, yeah. get, get And ready? And right. we'll never talk about Star Wars again. Fuck, that was so good. That was nice. I could tell. I'm not I'm wearing cans. All right, 20 minutes in. I guess we can talk about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Okay, so Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles came out in 1990, the year I was born. And I think you were just finishing up your, your undergrad at that point. No, I was, I was working on my master's. Okay, yeah. yeah. And um, I saw this movie growing up on VHS roughly a gazillion, billion, trillion times. Mm. These were my heroes. They were my soulmates. They're the people that I turned to. I was a moody child, if you can believe that. I can, yeah. Really? What yeah. do you mean? What are you saying? I mean, I'm just following along. So you're saying I'm fucked up? You're saying I'm a piece of shit? You're saying I'm fucked up piece of shit? Here's the, I'm just agreeing with you. Fuck you! I'm just agreeing with you. Okay? <laughs> I hate when that happens. Like, I could just agree with people and they... They, 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 didn't, they didn't want me to agree. How am I supposed to know? You're fine. Okay, sorry. Okay, um, uh, the the moody uh, the moody Raphael was my hero in these movies. Mm-hmm. I loved him. I thought it was great that they had like the 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 tough but moody sensitive guy. Yeah, I was like, this guy's my guy. He's sensitive like me. He's moody like me. But they still love him. What's his weapon? He got the size. 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 I love. He size, loses size, one, and it's like that's a fit more intro to him. Is everyone's like pizza? Awesome. He's, he's, he's like, like I fucked up. I fucked up. I fell off like fucking side. Yeah. Okay. So what I like about this movie that I was excited to get into is that um, I would say the first and third are two movies that were just huge in my childhood. I've saw them a million times Mm -hmm. and I love them very much. Um, This movie does a very weird thing where it combines like product placement children's entertainment with a truly like brutal, ugly, bizarre vision of New York at its like shittiest in the late 80s that mm-hmm. I think is actually great. And I think that the, the weird combination of textures where it has the smooth, tight 90 of a kid's movie coupled with like a really like textured, gritty, ugly New York that really feels lived in where every little character has a bit of business and is fun and like, you know, there's so, there's so much great like incidental dialogue and acting going on in this. Yeah. It, it bridges the gap between those two worlds, I think, more than many young people's movies that I've seen. And I want to know, like, have you seen this before? No. No, okay. no, no. It was, a, it was actually really weird. I There were things from my childhood where I wasn't really allowed or promoted, I guess, would be... I didn't have access to certain things because my father was very strict about what I could watch. 
he chose very strange things like foreign films without subtitles that I couldn't understand. And and as I recall, when the when the Walsh. ISIS beheading videos came out, he brought you back to your childhood home to watch those with him. Mm. Yeah. 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 I mean, he's a strange man. He'd moved out, but we still went back. We like knocked on the doors. Like, oh, excuse me, this is a very important moment in my my son's life. Right. Do you mind if we use the TV for a second? Yeah. They said okay. Sure. Yeah. They made us go out into the backyard, but yeah, they said okay. Makes sense. So we watched those. We watched like very violent things like old we didn't watch only that but we watched all like old movies like he was really obsessed with like 40s 50s movies french movies um but yeah i missed out on like almost everything fun from the 90s because of that did you play with nerf toys yeah okay but only at other people's houses right uh but but basically what i was gonna say is like these things were so big in culture that i still engage with them like i used to draw ninja turtles comics with my friend and we used to like act out, we used to pretend to be Ninja Turtles in his house. And we'd like run around and like attack his sisters and just like do goofy shit as Ninja Turtles. So it was like, that's how this like tiny, little, I was reading about the history of the comic book. It's like two broke dudes from Northampton, Massachusetts, like made the most popular thing ever. And it just became a huge billion dollar industry in this country, which is really crazy. I mean, traveling stage shows, look, look up the footage. I mean, they're probably insane. still going to this day. They're oh my God. very bizarre. Which is weird that they, they both sold the rights, which I find to be interesting because if you're, I don't know how money works really, <laughs> but the fact that you've created something, I mean, they must have sold, they must not have had complete ownership because they were having other companies produce stuff, but they must have had a significant portion and like they didn't think it was going to keep getting money out of it. They just sold the rights in like 2012. She's like, still shit was, still shit's happening all the time. Well, and as we'll be covering on the podcast, you know, there was an animated sequel to the first three live yeah, action well, like films. There was the, the Michael Bay uh, reboot, which we'll also be covering. So, yeah, mm-hmm. there was, just, I mean, I don't know, 2012, but th- at that point, that had been a cultural product for d- decades. I know, I mean, but it seems like a very safe investment. This is true. Especially if you created, I don't know. I bet they made a pretty penny. Do they still live in Massachusetts? I sincerely doubt it. Do you think we could get them on the on the on the podcast? Hey, uh, Laird Eastman, if you're listening, come on down. Well, I mean, we have to sort of set it up first. Or like email them, maybe. Yeah, or call them. Or... They can't hear me right now. I mean, Kevin, right, Kevin. right now is a little bit unclear because if right now could also be when it's airing, they might have list, They might be listening. Oh, sure. If you're listening, hey, you know, By that what's, the too late. what's the email? What's the email? It's too late. Fuck shit. WWIPodcast at gmail.com. Oh, fair enough. Well, okay, let me say this. That's my um, Venmo. I don't know why I changed my Venmo to WWIE Podcast. What, was what, I, what the fuck? You changed your personal what was Venmo I pl- to Yeah, what was I planning to do? I think I was like setting up Rob us? Patreon maybe? I don't know. But it's like so weird. My, my girlfriend was like, why is your, because we do like rent stuff and everything through Venmo. She's like, why is this your podcast? I was like, I do not remember. I think I was in a fucking fugue state. So you're trying to steal from me is the vibe I'm getting. Well, I pay for everything, so... Never mind. Let's go move past it. Okay. Um, so famously in... Uh, is it Williamsburg or Haydenville? There's a town on Route 9 in Western Mass before you get to Northampton where driving around a corner by the Williamsburg Snack Bar on Route 9. Okay. Yeah. You can see a big house up on a hill over over the river. You look up on the hill. There's a house on the hill. Famously, the local lore is that that is one of the Ninja Turtles creator's original homes which he bought with his first wife, who he divorced and then moved out to Los Angeles. And she, to this, the rumor says, to this day still lives there. Haunts and it's it? like a, well, she's alive. Um, and okay. she lives there, theoretically. Right. Fine. And I, the rumor is that she's like a drug-crazed mad woman living in the house that the Ninja Turtles bought in, in Williamsburg. That's interesting. Yeah, it's cool. It's a little local lore. Cool. Ooh, a little have you been? Western Mass. To the private house on the hill? Have no, you, I haven't. Have you broken in? You better believe it, baby. Yeah, I you stole see all their, their sighs. I stole a single sigh. A single sigh. But one sigh. Well. Yes. You better uh, watch out when your turtle ver- version of yourself comes and beats you up for it. Do you believe that there's are turtle versions of us? Yeah, that was your guy, Raphael. Well, I think he was the like the cultural icon that I was attracted your to. Your spirit turtle. Moodiness. Yeah. Uh, no, there's I, not like a seven billion why would that, turtles why would, as well. Why you think he'd come to get me or something? Yeah, because you stole a sigh. Oh, yeah. Fair enough. I, bet I mean, he, he comes back for the sigh. That's like. Size. We're, in this movie, we're seeing at the beginning of their career. They're 15. Yeah. Some of them are horny. All of them are hungry. Yeah. Some of them are happy and fun. Some of them are despondent. Yeah. Some of them have a complex emotional relationship, Rafael and Leonardo. Some just want to fucking, you know, do trivia and have fun. Donatello might beat up shit. Yeah. Um, So, yeah. So, um, as a kid, there was like, I remember there was at one point, uh, like a museum exhibition on the turtles in Northampton. And as a kid, my dad was like, we're going to the Teenage Mutant Turtles Museum. 
And I fucking like pissed my little panty. <laughs> And we fucking drove out there. It. And at the end, I mean, I'll never forget this. You could play Turtles in Time, the best oh, arcade game yeah. ever, for is... free at the end oh of the exhibit. Oh, my God. It was, the, as a child, this was Nirvana. How long was the line for that? Well, I think we just went there some random day, and it was, like, pretty open. And I lived there for, you know, as long as so I So you lived could've. there for years. If I could, I would move back. That's the part of my life, like, when I emotionally regress, like, when I'm thrown in a gulag by by Drumpf and his uh, orange minions, um, I will probably emotionally just replay Turtles in Time in my head. We're going to do the Minions movies, too. I'm excited. I'm actually genuinely mm. excited. I've seen uh, maybe I've seen one Despicable Me that I hated, the third one. Yeah. And I've I seen, seen Mi- one. Minions proper, which was great. I liked Minions. It was subtitled. Fun. It was fine. Yeah. yeah. No, but, but yes. Um, okay. So we're talking about Turtles, the mutant, mutant Ninja Turtles. Right. Teenage, of course. Got to keep adding in. Got to keep adding in there. It's What do you think about the name? <laughs> you know, I think they teenage probably thought it was like a fun. Ninja Turtles. I bet, you know, because the comic is a lot more serious and satirical, but also like it, 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 it's the tone is very different. There's yeah. a lot more violent. There's a lot more discussion of like philosophy and Buddhism and such. As a title, what do, you, what do you think? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Like in our heads. It's in, it's it's impossible to talk out. about yeah, because right. that is like a phrase that I know. It doesn't right. sound weird because that's just like a thing. Right. That'd be like asking, does God sound weird? And and to me, God is so many things. Right. I don't think God is an old man on, with a beard and a cloud. You don't? I think God is in is in a smile when you, when you put a coin in a beggar's cup and the beggar looks up at you and smiles. That's God. That's God? That's God. Wait, just the smile or the beggar? Uh, both. Is it a test? I don't know. All three. Um, I think God is when the wind, the warm wind blows that in, in, at the end of as winter thaws and spring comes. It's too much. It's a fucking breeze. Chill out. That's fine. Sure, that's fine. Like the warm breeze at the end of the winter signifying renewal and rebirth. That's that's not even, that's like Thinking an air warm. conditioner. Jesus Christ. Thinking warm. You know, are you. When, you're, when your lover turns to you and says, hey, you're all right in bed at night. That's God. But also maybe a Ninja I, Turtle. I don't I know. I also think it's Old Man. You think Old Man on Cloud? Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck do I know, right? <laughs> old Man on uh, Cloud. Yeah, cloud? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, so good. Yeah, um, yeah I, I, uh, I do not think that. I think the phrase is great. I think Michael Bay, he's a fuck because he was trying to get rid of it. Well, so, yeah, he changed it infamously to TMNT. No, no, no. He changed. So that was the animated one. Oh, okay. And actually, they were going to make a... Four, I'm so glad I did some research for this. I, they... Uh, we're going to make a fourth movie in 1994 called TMNT colon the something, something, something. And they never made it. And then they made the animated one called TMNT. And then Michael Bay production was going to just call it Ninja Turtles. That, which is, which sucks. And he was going to change them to be aliens from another planet. That, get the fuck out. And everyone was like, we will actually kill you, Michael Bay. So uh, he changed it. So it's called, that came out, right? In 2000, like. 17? Yeah, his came out. Yeah. yeah. Earlier than that, but I, I have not seen it. Uh, it's called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and it's, uh, it's got the turtles from the sewer. You know who has a weird career? No. Steve Barron, who directed this movie. Yeah, I was looking at his career, too. He, he directed A Bridge Too Far, the yeah. World War II epic about uh, Project Market Garden. Mm-hmm. Superman? He's also done a lot of music videos, right? Hold on. I thought that was Richard Donner. What the fuck? Oh, no. Sorry. No, no. No, my bad. He No, he was assistant camera on those. Ignore me. Ignore me. I read the thing wrong. Shit. He directed a bunch of music videos. Fuck. Coneheads. He did Coneheads. What music videos? Tell the, me. The Adventures of Pinocchio. Choking Man. What the fuck Weird. is that? It's the ripoff of the Chuck Palahniuk book. Oh, it stars Octavio Gorez, Bioris, and Eugenia Yuan. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, okay, so... So we, we, we were taking a long walk around to talk about this being sort of a return for you to sort of like a, a thing that was a part of your childhood tangentially. Now you're looking probably the most visible cultural product of this entire empire. The yes. first in the, Other in than the video game. film series. I did play the video game. But yeah, I think you're right. The, I the, think... the Game Boy game? That was, one of the, that was the first no, Game no, Boy game the arcade, I ever played. Let me ar- fucking talk. Okay. Fuck me. The arcade game. Yeah, we talked about Turtles in Time. It's perfect. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying that's... I did that. Okay, but did you play the Game Boy game? No, I was not allowed to have a really? Game Boy. Really? Oh, no, no. I would play it at friends' houses because, again, similarly... I think the Game Boy was a much harder share. Like, I would never you, go... You kind of had to get the thing yourself. You had to, like, yeah. Get fucking thing. I'm never going over to someone's house and be like, oh, can I play Game Boy? Because it was... Were there any two-player Game I Boy I remember games? being... No, it's impossible. I remember, we could have connected yeah. him with the link at some yeah, point. Yeah, I no, remember that. I was craven enough to be that kid. It was like, oh, it's so fun to be at your house. Give me the fucking Game Boy, though. Yeah. I was... How such, about you fuck off? What do you... Kids don't do that. What do you think kids do? God 
Damn it. What They're all I... fucking vaping. Yeah, sharing vapes. They're all doing nudes on Snapchat now. They go, but I mean, like, would they go over to someone's house and be like, can I do this solo activity at your house because I can't do it at my house? Like, what would that I'm be? I'm certain that must happen. Like, why are we speculating about the lives of children? We, we're so old and far removed from that. Yeah. I think you know? that's it's fun. When I was a kid, we literally were still in a world where we would hit each other with sticks in the woods. Like, <laughs> like actually, everyone's like, yeah. oh, no one goes in nature. It's like, yeah, well, we went in nature and, like, threw rocks at each other. I'm only laughing because, yeah, I did the same right? thing. It's like, it's like yeah. it wasn't, like, this edifying experience. Like, we, were, like, got lost I in mean, the I mean, I a lot. I learned a lot. Yeah, I'm sure you did. Yeah. Yeah. How much hurt, sticks hurt and how much it sucks hey, to get hey, lost hey, in the wood. Spoiler for kids, for kids of today, getting hit with a stick fucking sucks. Yeah. It's not cool. But you know what doesn't suck? What? Hitting another kid with Oh, that shit feels great. That was really fun. That shit feels great. Yeah. Um, yes, okay, so I, you're staring the movie in the eye now. Mm. Uh, what is, you know, at the seasoned age of 40-whatever, what is it like to look at this movie and be like, oh, this is what I was denied? I got to say, there's one thing I'm going to butt in with. I was looking at our iTunes account because we were having some problems with our feed. Yeah. And I was testing stuff, and I read one of our three iTunes reviews, and one of them's like, five stars, great show, but the jokes about Charles's age aren't funny. Who the fuck said that? I don't know. Who the fuck said, hey, coward, at me next time, you piece of shit. (laughs) You can't add on iTunes. Charles is fucking old, okay? (laughs) Anyway, I thought that was funny. I'm 22. Whoever did that, you're a genius. Yeah. Um, Yeah, so uh, I I asked you while we were watching it, I was like, "Is what's the word for FOMO that you've already mowed? Yeah. And mo FOMO? (laughs) Missed out fear? Like, what is it? Because I I had that while watching. I was like, I think it's just a sense of loss. Yeah. Emptiness. So yeah. yeah. Um, it was definitely like regret, nostalgia. Like I wish this was something I could feel nostalgic for because it's cool. It still like looks good. It holds up. Like the animatronics are good. They, okay. Again, watching this movie twenty nine years after it came out. If you can meet it halfway and that it's obviously people wearing these very strange turtle outfits, they look fucking sick. I think it looks better than CGI, especially oh my from, God. Yeah. Uh, well, obviously from that era. After dragging like, our way through the Terminator oh series, there are large stretches of Terminator th- five. Th- 5 that look like... two years ago. Right. That look like dog shit. Yeah. Next to fucking Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which is like a work of art. Yeah, like the, the rat, Screamer. <laughs> it's Screamer, yeah. <laughs> you started with Scabbers, which was yeah. embarrassing for all of us. Uh, and it was just two of us, so. Well, I'm saying it for a generation. Okay, you yeah. Know? Well, I didn't see it. There are a few archetypal rats for millennials Scabbers like me. Scabbers is one of them. Scabbers is one of them. The beloved rat, of course, from Harry Potter. Bo- oh, the Wait, boy who lived. Is that is that the rat from Harry Potter? That's Ron's rat, remember? Oh, yeah. Scabbers. Hey, spoiler. It's fucking Peter Pettigrew. That oh, old it's old the fucker. He probably seen Ron Jacket. I lost my finger. Governor? I am the governor. That guy's like a real actor, and like, yeah, and good for him. He probably got paid out the fucking asshole. For that. Anyways, so uh, you're saying so was, you, you missed out. I missed out. You missed out. I also, but I didn't like pizza that back then. I that's think wait, what? <laughs> wait, stop everything. Right? You didn't like pizza? No, I tried it. I just didn't like it. Wait, you tried pizza once, one time. Yeah, decided not for me. Right, pizza. Yeah, in the nineties. Yeah, you didn't like pizza. Well, we didn't have it at the house, and it was, like, different. You know, kids don't like different shit. Pizza is... Look, we didn't eat out. Oh we God. did not go out to eat. I just ate mom's stew. <laughs> what the fuck is mom's stew? What do you think? I don't know. It's stew my mom made. I know, but stew is, like, a hot thing in a pot. Yeah. It's... That's a, a large fucking field to populate. It's like a, a, a pot roast. So, like, beef? Yeah. Potatoes. Yeah. Carrots. Carrots. Yeah. Onions. Onions. Yeah. How uh, often do you have mom's stew? I like once a week. That's Church one night a week. No, but it was leftovers. That turned into mom's stew with rice from yesterday. It's just like, I had a lot of mom's stew growing up. This is fucked up. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I went to a fucking Pizza Hut. Yeah, I mean, that's great. Yeah. I didn't like the tomato sweetness with the saltiness of the cheese and bread. I that think. relationship is the whole thing about pizza okay i love it now what the fuck i just didn't like it then you didn't like pizza in the 90s as a child that's so crazy shut up it was scary i was scared I was you were scared of coward. pizza yeah what did pizza do to you well i saw I mean, maybe tell me off the bot i don't know uh, no it's fine i saw okay. that movie space balls i had a pizza and oh pizza the hut yeah. scary 
Remember, remember. Well, it's scary to think about him taking his own life. Yeah, he ate himself to death. It's so up. I was thinking about him eating me and suicide while at Pizza Hut. That's a, that's heavy. It's All right, that's heavy. Yeah. yeah. So I didn't like pizza. I will say I recently tried uh, the Pizza Hut stuffed crust for the first time in like maybe fifteen years this year. Yeah, it holds up. Great. It's a miracle of a product. <gasps> that sounds good. It's fantastic. Uh, I hope one day, following in Burger King's footsteps, a large pizza chain comes out with a. Uh, fast food pizza that is vegan from your lips to vegan god's ears but yes um so as a child i fucking loved pizza i remember uh we i I had one of those uh 90s kids you're gonna remember this one i did a pizza hut birthday party where you go to the back and pizza hut and make your own pizza oh my god that sounds fun you done that shit fucking rolls you make your own personal no i didn't make that didn't ever do that because i didn't like pizza it's weird spending time with you because it's like you're like a ghost of a man yeah you're like an idea of a person. And not a great idea either. <laughs> no one's first idea, certainly. Right. Right, yeah. Um, no, okay, so this movie, of course, the, the fucking bad boys of the sewer, they love pizza. And uh, I think when I, we talked about watching it, there's so many individual images in this movie that really stand out to me. Mm. Like it's, it's a really well shot movie with great ideas. The pizza man delivering the pizza into the sewer grate rules. I think everything to do with pizza rules. Yes. That scene rules. It's so good. That idea, like I could imagine being a kid being like, oh my fuck, I want to live in a sewer grate and have a pizza man slip a pizza sideways into my house. Right. And the beauty of this movie that's so great and I can't really get over how fucking good it is. Is that it's it's, it's a real New York fucking movie oh, fuck where you. almost no one at any point reacts at all to the extremity of any of the situations they find themselves yeah. in. And it's like ah fucking New York. Like he delivers the pizza to the sewer grate to an anonymous person pushing money out of a sewer grate. He's like, this is this job's fucked up. He's like, I gotta get a new route. It's like, this is fucking weird. But he's, he's not like that put off or upset. He's just like, he's oh. more put off because he was two minutes late and they didn't pay him the extra three bucks. Right. And by also, the way, the turtles didn't tip. No, they didn't. I don't like that. They're an enemy of the people. Yeah. We talked about in the Terminator five episode, you know, we alluded to the idea that like a Bernie Sanders figure would have been a prominent critic of the Genesis program and like the dominance of any like tech company over the American OS world. But in this case, I think it's a clear sign of, you know, this is the dregs of capitalism, a broken New York City before yep. Mayor Judy, Judy Giuliani, Judy Giuliani Judy. saved it. And he saved it and it was so good. But like, yeah, this is like a, a real doggy dog world where like the turtles can't even tip the nice pizza man. That could be. I didn't even think about it. I thought it's they a were condition just of like capitalism. Wow. Yeah. I think they're really struggling. How do the turtles make money? You know uh, what I mean? Scampers provides. It's not fucking Scampers, bro. What's his name? Sca- Splinter. 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 Well, it's complicated because there's Shredder. Good guy Splinter, bad guy Shredder. One's a rat, one's a guy. Hey, he doesn't need any help opening a can. Or making coleslaw. I fucking love these jokes. Good jokes. This, this movie's great because like some of the jokes just like straight up suck, but they're delivered with such enthusiasm yeah. that I'm like, this fucking rules. Yeah. It's like Bill and Ted or Wayne's World uh-huh. where it's like just the sheer optimism of these main characters. It's like so addictive. I got more uh, embarrassing truths. Okay. Only seen one Bill and Ted. Didn't see any of the Wayne's Worlds. You've never seen Wayne's World? No. This is like a disheartening episode. We start with the, with the high of yeah. you eating your own cum and Pete Alonso setting the MLB rookie record for uh-huh. home runs. Uh, of course, we tried our delicious dogfish head and the Grateful Dead present American Beauty Pale Ale. And now you're bringing us all Can down. We not, let's not focus on that. Look, my dad fucked me up. It's true. He provided interesting education Yeah. for certain things. I feel like I was probably the only like 14-year-old boy that had seen nine Jean-Luc Godard films. So, and how, how did that play in high school? Not great. Kids were like, "Oh, Independence Day is gnarly," and you were like, uh, "Jules and Jim is a real. It's a masterwork." It's yeah, Jules and Jim. Oh, for fuck's sake, Jules and Jim. They were like the scene where fucking Will Smith punches the alien, <laughs> and, and then you're like, "But in, in Jules and Jim, they run through the Louvre." Yeah, Jim. It's pronounced Jim. Cause Holy shit, dude! American <sighs> Jules. Jules at Jim. Sorry. Jules at Jim. I'm sorry. I don't want to make you sigh. You, it's way too late for that, Brad, my man. <laughs> just take a drink. My man ski. Just take a drink. Oh, just turn to the bottle? Yeah. The can. You sick These fuck. tall boys look especially tall for some reason. Uh, they're very bright, I suppose. Yeah. I'm going to need a snack after this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, um, uh, I basically learned all my film education from a crazy person. Yeah. Um, but that was all like super weird like 
70s, 80s, 90s, American, Japanese, Italian. Stuff. But this is this is so a like weird I totally movie. missed out yeah. on. Okay, yeah, yeah. American good American comedy action movies, American comedies. Right. My dad hated Bill Murray. What? what he really? hates everything to do with drugs. Wait. So I would like could not watch anything from that whole era. Well, well, what I mean when I think of like the '90s and Bill Murray, I'm thinking Groundhog's Day, which doesn't I think of any drugs. No, but I think my my dad's like obsessed with their actual person. Oh, the fact and, that like, Bill Murray was related to marijuana was yeah, upsetting to him. Exactly. So I could not watch anything that had Bill Murray in it. Wow. Yeah. That's fucked. Yeah. So I would get up at like seven in the morning and watch movies by myself while he was still asleep. That is wild. Isn't it weird? My analogy. I lived a story, weird life. I remember. Uh, do you remember parental passcodes on DVD yeah. players? Uh-huh. Uh, we had to reset someone's passcode to watch uh, Mall Rats in middle school, and I felt like I really got away with one there. Then I remember feeling guilty later because there's like you know the three boobs in it and a lot of cursing. Mm. Yeah, that's the one thing that I escaped without feeling any guilt. Wow. Because I understood that I was living under a regime. Wow. Yeah. Huh. And he was. In, he was not doing well. Do you hear who he reminds me of? Trump, freaking President Cheeto. Yeah, fucking. He voted for him. The orange man. Yeah. Do you vote for LePage too? Yeah. Amazing. Okay, <laughs> let's get back. Let's like maybe for five straight minutes talk about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, uh, there's a lot to talk about. Too, okay, so let's let's uh, give it the credit to students. Talk about only this for the next what twenty minutes. Put it on the clock. Not even. Um, we, we can go. go we can go to twenty. Who, Who gives a, a shit? Okay. Um, April O'Neil, legendary '90s babe, and a strong female character who kicks ass, is Ugh. undaunted, makes her own choices, chooses when to be romantic, makes first moves. Yeah. Is just like okay, we, we've best. been. You've, you've probably. At this point, okay, I'm just going to forgive me. We haven't recorded the Terminator 6 episode yet, but we have we have been livid with the treatment of Sarah Connor as a character over the course of that film series. And it's genuinely depressing to see a, a character, a female character starts out so strong in the first movie, just be ground down into nothing over the course of the series. And in this movie... Not even over the course of, immediately following the first film. She sure, is, right. She is obliterated. So April O'Neil comparatively oh my god just fucking rules and i think it like it, you, you watch a lot of these movies you saw as a kid or in my case you yeah obviously didn't and you're like i think generally speaking gender roles leap out certainly from the mm. vantage point of almost 30 years of cultural production changes and 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 social mores uh hopefully letting it leading in the right direction but april o'neill was a real fucking tall glass of water as far as female representation and you know she's uh she's dressed great. She's a strong woman who's like I love that she's good at her job. I, I love oh movies people good at the job. She's like a fucking like her the, in this movie's vision of reporting. She's exceptional at it. Um, I love her like she plays hardball with the police chief. She plays hardball with her boss. Yeah, she's like she just rules. And she's a great artist. And then like yeah, her talking about watching great. the movie. Um, how this movie is actually quite deft at handling narrative, where we trade off between many characters and their experiences in the film. From mm-hmm. Casey Jones, played by yeah. the great Elias Codius. Incredible. To Danny, the shitty, annoying kid who's actually kind of awesome. Yeah. To the turtles themselves and their emotional journey, like living life without their leader. The like rat. The, figure. the nameless rat. Splinter, the fucking iconic legend <laughs> who helped tutor not just the, the turtles, but Dan, Ni. Nee. And I think what I like about that is that, you know, often in these movies, you know, seeing a, t- a teacher teach a, a new student while under duress is awesome. So like, you know, while in captivity, him teaching Danny lessons is so cool. But anyways. I know when, we closed the book. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. In the same episode? Oh, I'm God. I'm so sorry, but oh, you God. said it. Okay, ready? Creak. <laughs> Better than blowing, Yoda. Blowing dust off. Yeah, Yoda. Close it. Yeah, Yoda. Fuck Yoda. Better than Yoda. Suck anyway, me, sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. Yeah. Continue. Um, so in the middle of the movie, when they like flee to what in the comic books actually is Northampton, when they flee New York after losing Splinter to the Foot Clan and their dope ass fucking hideout, which fucking rules and is so sick, um, you know, April like walks us through what's going on in the turtles' lives in a voiceover montage that is actually tastefully done, yeah. informative, and rich with like emotional detail that rules. It was beautiful, and it's it's like it's it's like, this is like a deftly handled for how obvious. For how like obvious parts of the movie are, don't breathe into the mic. For how definitely handled, like you think it's a good, it's a big dumb obvious kids movie, but like it actually has this like level of delicacy to it that's kind of surprising. Yeah, uh, I, especially coming out of uh, Terminator, where like where, where everyone's 
compl- I mean, yes, you should complain because the roles of women are awful and they seem to have gotten worse. Like the fact that April O'Neil exists, as you said, she is, she controls every situation she's in, basically. She like handles the wage gap with her boss and just like fucking give me a raise, you idiot. She, she like just plays around the police chief. Like she is the one in well, power. And then, then Casey is like harassing her and she's like, go fuck yourself. Oh my yourself. God, amazing. He's like, he calls her toots, which is like, especially in the eight, like nineties, like no one gave a shit. And she's like, fuck you. I'm going to do this by myself. And he's like, he honestly is like, he doesn't even know any better. He's just a dumb piece of shit man, but he's not like trying to even be mean. He's just like, I'm just a dude who uses the lingo of the time. And she's like, fuck you. I just casually degrade women. It's what yeah, we do. Like right. that's what men did in 1990. And then she's like, fuck you. I'm going to go fuck. I'm just going to go deal with this by myself because I don't like this. And then later he <laughs> learns to not do that anymore. And then when their relationship like flourishes, like she calls the shots basically. Yeah, she's or, like, like, she, like, kiss me. Right. And I love that. And she cares about the terms. Like, so she's not like, I feel like that's why James Cameron is such an idiot because the way he thinks you have to make a strong female character is by literally, literally making her strong. Where like, April O'Neil is caring. She's nurturing. She's loving to the turtles. She like when, uh, what's his name? Was Ra- Raphael? Mm. Is like knocked out. She like, she takes a step away from the combat to like make sure he's okay. Yeah. And like, that's not a sign of weakness. That's like a sound, sign of power. Like she chooses to make sure that she's like, taking care of someone that she loves. And that being said, when confronted by a group of foot clansmen, she fucking whips she, out a sigh and tries to fuck him with a yeah, bag. Yeah, hits, him, hits him with a bag. Like, she's right. like, she is a really great character. She's an awesome person to lead us through this. And like, she, like, there's always that character that tells us about the world because we don't know what's going on. And it felt great to be the, like, to do that with her. She's also the first voice we hear in the movie, on mm-hmm. the TV. I yeah. think the first face we really see. Yeah, we do. And I also love that over the course of the movie, Michael Angel keeps going, she's a babe. Yeah. And it's like, look, Mike, I get it. But, you know, a little demeaning. He's 15. And at the end of the movie, he's 15. Yeah. He, he calls her sis. Did you catch that? Yeah. And I was like, this is, like, there's an arc to even yeah. that relationship. Uh-huh. And it's like, it's the kind of movie when you watch it, you're like, there's no reason this should be this good. Yeah. Literally no reason. It's a movie that has Burger King, Pizza Hut, Pepsi, Domino's. Like, there's like a, a lot of product placement in yeah. this movie. It's in some ways very crass and silly. And like, again, there's lots of like the goofy turtles being goofy. Mm-hmm. But the detail is so rich. I want to ask you about um, Casey Jones, who was one of the coolest characters of the 90s, yeah. I think. He I think so too. is very dirty all the time, mm-hmm. which rules. He wears sweatpants and an undershirt and like a denim vest. A He's lot. So cool. And a hockey mask. Um, yeah, that's actually a really cool hockey he looks mask too. So cool. I loved him as a child. Yeah. What was your experience with Casey? Well, I also loved him as a child because I watched Cronenberg's Crash when I was like 14. So I also was like, really thought he was a cool dude. But having seen him now in Turtles, he was a highlight. Like, I guess they were all highlights, but he like exemplif like he was an exemplary use of character. Yeah, I think he like especially if I mean we're probably reading too deep into this, but the fact that April O'Neil is such like a huge character and she's very strong and like she basically teaches him how to not suck. Like he is a guy who's generally good, who needs some help. He's vulgar, he's dirty, he doesn't really know how to talk to people, but he's ultimately trying to do good. But and- here's the thing. We, we never interrogate his intentionality at any point, which That's I love. True. He's like a random vigilante who's like a sports-obsessed nut who just shows up to like beat people. We later learn he was briefly a professional something player. Did hockey player. Hockey player. Yeah, okay. hockey player. He's just like kind of like a fucking lunatic. And like I love that it's this depiction of like an urban environment where like – People come together because they're living life on the edge because they're fucking crazy. And, yeah. the, and like the turtles are like the logical extent of that. They're radioactive mutants. And like this television reporter who hurls herself into the fray and this like Central Park hanging out fucking nutball who just beats people with sticks. Like they, they form this like gang of like like their relationship is is so natural. And like as and it just like as a kid I didn't even question it. And as an adult, I'm like, I get it. Yeah. Well, I think you see the like what's going on with the earlier comics, I didn't read them, but like that would make much more sense in a violent, dirty, sort of cynical comic book made by two adults that liked showing people getting cut up, like having good people, but they're like really, it's sort of like Watchmen where it's just like good people, but they're really sort of weird and crazy and just like being violent against people. Like they're using their violence for good purposes, but they're still fucked up. Yeah. 
And I think that the, 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 what's clever about it is that with Raphael, you have the character who articulates, like, I'm a freak. I'm treated like a freak. I'm an outsider. Yeah. But then not all the characters feel that way. No. Which is great. Most of the turtles don't. Yeah. And I think a lot of these movies that have, like, a single character who grapples with that, that can often really bog down a narrative. And by having this, like, spread of weirdos with their own experiences living life in this way in an environment where they're, they're not, even in their weirdness, they're, like, a, a weird among even weirder people. Mm-hmm. It's just, like, something about it just feels, like, really warm and again, it has a mixture of grit and warmth. I think it's like just wonderful. Yeah. And I think what it did with Dan was really beautiful. Dan, of course, the child of Charles, her boss, who keeps showing up at her apartment constantly. Yeah, weird. Pre- Boundaries. Yeah, I don't know. I'd say pre-internet, but they have phones. So it's weird. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think it's because it's a visual art form and having her be on the phone with her boss all the time would probably be boring. I don't know. I like phone stuff. <laughs> um, but the fact like Dan's arc was really great. Um, he... He like confronts his dad at the end. It's like basically like he apologizes to April for stealing sort of. It's like a pretty weak apology, but he like it's his attempt at being better. And then he goes up to his dad and his dad's like shows relief. And he says, he calls him Danny. He's like, my name's Dan. And like, he really stands up for himself with his dad and like shows that there's more than just him going to, He's going to be a, a son, but he also wants to make sure his dad treats him like a person. Well, it's also brilliant because in a lot of these movies, like, you know, the iconic thing is like the faceless, the faceless minion of like, there's just like an ocean of like random people who the bad guy has under his his, his uh, control. And they're just like running in waves, the bad guys. And there's they're the good guys. And that happens in this movie with the Foot Clan. And they are faceless like ninjas. Mm-hmm. But this movie does a really daring, interesting thing for a kid's movie where we see these like young alienated teens like attracted to this like weird underground family. And they're, they're told this is a family. Family. They're shown respect and honor. They're taught skills. Like their experience in the Foot Clan is clearly valuable and meaningful. Yeah. And through the character of Sam Rockwell at age 22, we like hear like them articulate like, you no, know, this, you know, they have to confront the fact that they're part of this like criminal enterprise that's not really the family that it says it is. But like without a lot of dialogue and without a lot of like needless exposition, they really explore the fact that like these are people under the thrall of somebody. And so it humanizes the bad guys and gives like a texture to the movie that like didn't need to be there. No, I think. The 90s was a really interesting time in cinema where it was a lot about family. It's a lot about divorce. Like divorce movies were huge back in the early 90s and kids being mad at their parents was a big part of that era. I don't know that that's really a huge part of culture anymore. I'm sure there's some of that out there, but I hear what you're saying. But I feel like like so many movies, like I, I rewatched Twister, I watched Kindergarten Cop. It's like all these like silly movies that we just sort of like think we're dumb and like die hard like they're all divorce movies they're all about kids having to live in a broken home and we don't get any we know that the mother's not around we don't know why in in the charles dan Dan family yeah yeah. and like he's obviously fucking he's he's not doing well his dad's working all the time he's alien like they're both very far away from each other the home is fucked up and he turns to this other life because he finds family there it's also about the failure of late capitalism where he says to his son i make enough money to like take care of both of us comfortably and you still steal yeah and there's like all this like interesting stuff in there where it's like in this exhausted city and it's like one of its most like weakened awful forms like how people struggle to find meaning and this is a fucking ninja turtles movie yeah it's so good so good it's, I- it's a tight 90 and a fucking pleasure to watch yeah, I mean, I've talked about myself a lot, but like, I don't know if you had these things, but I had a lot of like fantasies about not being in my family anymore. Oh, yeah. Of yeah, course. I feel like yeah. all kids have that where it's like, I hate the conflict. My parents don't get along. My siblings are dumb. Like, I, I like, like my time away. And if I could have a different family, that would be awesome. Like the whole, what, Lost Boys, whatever that is. Robin Hood? No. I know you're talking Peter about. Pan. Yeah, Peter, Peter Pan. Pan. Very similar yeah. pants. Uh, you green, certainly have the physique of a the Peter green, Pan. the green people. Yeah. Um, but like that. Whole... I have the physique of a Smee. <laughs> I'm more of a Smee. Smee! That was my favorite yeah, line. Smee fucking rules from that year. Um, uh, Captain Hook screaming Smee was the best. Um, but like that whole concept of like joining a new family. Right. That was a that was a big thing in the '90s, and it's like makes total sense. I was like, family is hard, and I think this captured. So effortless, like Danny seems like a throwaway character, and yet at the end of the movie, you're like, wow, he was like, he bridged, he did the same thing. Like April O'Neil and Danny both, like, brought me into this world that I could feel both the childlike and adult emotions of being in this experience. Wow, wow, 
TMNT. TMNT, we fucking love it. Um, yeah, no, I, I think you totally nailed it. It has a depth to it and a richness. The fact that everyone gets an arc is so cool. You know, it's just like a really, it's a feat. And I, again, like, you know, maybe we some like insane people talking about this movie, but like, it's fucking great. It's we we watch a lot of bad movies. Okay, so in, in the waning moments of the podcast, this is the first movie in a series. Uh, I'm interested in, you know, I've seen two and three. Mm-hmm. I've never seen the animated sequel and I've never seen the reboot. Yeah. Um, I'm very excited to get to three, a movie that I absolutely adore. Um, as far as like a foundation for a series, where are you at? I feel like this is a slam dunk. Like, I think this is both a slam dunk as a standalone and a slam dunk as a, I think that's rare. Like with Shrek and Austin Powers, like we had a good world starter, but it was not like as it's all in the movie was sort of meh. It was fine. But yeah, Shrek would have been like a weird cult movie if nothing else. If, right. it was, if it failed at the box office, it would have been like, you seen this fucking Mike Myers movie? He's <laughs> a fucking ogre. <laughs> it's a William Steig and adaptation. Not much happens. Yeah. It's like, like, they, <laughs> they go on a walk. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's like this mo- This succeeds in both a standalone and as a starter. It creates characters that I'm excited about. Like as Raphael, you fucking chose Raphael because of course he's the coolest, most complicated turtle. He's the fucking smoldering one. But I chose the one with the biggest reach, which I think is very important. In well, any in Turtles party. in Time, we talked about this, but famously in Turtles in Time, uh, Donatello's staff, the bow staff, has the longest reach of any of the weapons. Yeah, and I think purple's purple's a cool color. I fucking it's love. a cool. It's my color. favorite color growing up. Yeah. So I, I I I am not too sad that I get to be Donatello. I think we also like the Donatello Raphael relationship wasn't really explored too strongly in this film. So I'm sort of excited to get a little bit more because I feel like it was actually really weird. There was lots. There's four of them, but so many times in the movie they showed like three turtles like kicking something and then not the fourth one like they didn't always show all the turtles being a part of the thing but as a, at, at different key moments like famously okay famously what the fuck am I talking about I mean, this one is like, like, whatever you know <laughs> it, at the house you have like two different groups you have like Leonardo who, think, right. who gets in a fight with Raphael and he's like we don't need you and he storms out he feels the most guilt ridden when Raphael's injured and he's like he's like sleeping next to him in the bathtub as oh my he, god as he recovers meanwhile Michelangelo and Donatello are literally fucking around being like weird assholes and like partying yeah. with Casey and just being like fucking annoying dorks. It's sick. Yeah. And but that like, was one of the moments where she was like writing in her journal being like, Raphael is doing this and yeah. Leonardo is doing this and but then, okay. Donatello. And then she just like doesn't talk about uh, Michelangelo at all. Right. Michelangelo's just fucking around. Yeah. He's, he's just a He goofball. loves pizza. He thinks she's a babe. He likes skating. He's just like a motherfucker. He's the it's ultimate sick. turtle. He's just like a pure scuzzball. And it's pure sick. turtle. Yeah. The most turtle of all of them. He's a pure turtle. He's a pure turtle. Um, and then I love that Leonardo goes off to meditate and brings them all together to have that moment where they all meditate and see that the spirit of Splinter says, you passed the final test. It's not just about being a ninja. So the fucking yeah. mental game, bro. And, and I then, love that scene. Sorry, to, but like the scene with you sort of talked about, but like with Danny and, and Splinter. Splinter. Yes. There's, there's, there's a couple scenes where Splinter like brings Both him under his are wing. Great. Yeah. Like he's and it's like actually good advice. It's not like some bullshit movie advice. It's like he's being so caring. I mean, like, if you need help, I can help you. I have an, I'm have open. I'm okay, going to well, listen. Well, to, to bridge what we're talking about, the movie sympathizes with Danny and explains those and, and validates those feelings of rebellion and, and isolation and then shows you how valuable it can be to listen and be accepted and to open yourself up to, the, to change and to, and to not being closed off. It's, it's really beautiful. Yeah. And then they all meditate together. They get the final check mark. You did it, boys. You can meditate. Nice. That's and, hard. As a 200-hour yoga professional, meditation is incredibly difficult right and then they come so back they to the did. house where casey and april are really bonding and having a moment which is like really beautiful and like this like a great like flourishing of their relationship and then all four of them come out of the woods and they say hey we're ready to go back mm-hmm. let's fucking do it then we get into the last third of the movie it's a wonderful beat in the movie yeah it's great this movie fucking rules i am not close to saying when will it end i cannot wait to watch more it is no. so up, like uplifting and fun and exciting oh i love these movies oh my god i uh... I will blame I'll, some of these feelings on it being a tight 90. Oh, for we sure. We have escaped the realm of the tight 90, and it's so nice. Like, pacing just is better in a tight 90. This movie moves like clockwork. It's great. It's a pleasure to watch because it just unspools naturally and at a good pace. It's Ugh. just wonderful. Certainly, 
you know, God, again, not to harp on this, but like we're really like mired by Terminator 5, a movie that like needs to constantly reset, re explain, and reintroduce things like nonstop. And it's like agonizing. Yeah. It just felt like endless. And this movie was such a pleasure to watch it unfold. And like it's not, it's not facile. It's not, it's, it's for children, but it's not childish. And yeah. like, I, I think all I wish all movies series had a movie as sweet and wonderful as this to begin with yeah. as sweet and wonderful as the dogfish head and the grateful dead present American Beauty Paleo and I might say as sweet and wonderful as my come <laughs>